Hello everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. And with this video, I'm introducing another learning platform called Visdolia. And via Visdolia, you have the practice questions available on this video, like the one what you see here. In the practice session, you will have multiple choice questions, you will have single answer questions and also the case scenarios. And the best part of Visjolia is that you do get personalized feedback as in this case, you know, it correctly identified what went wrong. It correctly identified that the response given was wrong. So after you complete watching the video, just click on the practice session and enjoy learning. So this is the part 5 of diseases of immune system and we will be discussing about type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. In my previous video, you have learned in detail about type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. So in this section, we will understand the mechanism of type 2 hypersensitivity reaction along with some examples. Well, by now you know that there are four types of hypersensitivity reactions, type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. Type 1, which is which we have already discussed, right? Immediate hypersensitivity reaction, where we talked about anaphylaxis and allergies. So, this is what we will be studying today that is, antibody mediated hypersensitivity reaction or type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. As I mentioned, type 2 hypersensitivity is also referred to as antibody mediated hypersensitivity. So, what happens here is that there is an immune response mechanism which involves the interaction between the antibodies and the antigens. Okay, That's why it is called antibody mediated hypersensitivity. Now, what are all the antigens where antibodies can develop? The antigens are attached to the surfaces of the cells or it can be within the extracellular matrix. This is very important why, when you are understanding type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Remember, the antigens are attached to the surfaces of the cells are within the extracellular matrix and not free floating or soluble antigens because free floating and soluble antigens are implicated in type 3 hypersensitivity which we'll be studying a bit later right as of now remember the antigens are attached to the surfaces of the cells or within the extracellular matrix the outcome of this kind of hypersensitivity is it could be the tissue injury or inflammation or dysfunction so there are three different outcomes. One is antibody mediated cell destruction. Second one is antibody mediated inflammation. And third one is antibody mediated cellular dysfunction. So let's understand these things one by one in detail. First one being antibody mediated cell destruction. So cell destruction can occur in by two ways. One is which is complement mediated through the membrane attack complex and another is phagocytosis by opsonization. First one being membrane attack complex. Let's take an example of an RBC in a mismatched blood transfusion. Okay, So this is an RBC. That's the antigen on the surface of the RBC and you have antibodies developed. In this case, by a mismatched blood transfusion. Say, for example, the recipient is B positive. So, that means you will be having B antigen on the surface of the RBCs, right? Imagine in, the, in this case, a mismatched transfusion has occurred where he has been transfused with A positive. So, what happens here is that the, the donor blood has anti-B antibodies, right? So, there is antigen-antibody reaction which leads to activation of complement and thereby you know there is a formation of membrane attack complex which causes pores on the surface of the RBCs and then the red blood cell is lysed. So this is the mechanism which we see in mismatched blood transfusion which is an example of type 2 hypersensitivity reaction which is antibody mediated cell destruction. As I told you, the second way the cell can be destroyed is by opsonization. Let's take another example. See, the opsonization can occur either by complement mediated. In this case, the C3B is identified by the receptor for C3B on the macrophages or it can be through the FC receptor. Okay. See, the FC receptor binds to the antibody on the surface of the red blood cells. And this antibody is usually immunoglobulin G or immunoglobulin M. So, what happens is that, so whenever there is a binding either by FC receptor or by the C3 receptor, ultimately it results in phagocytosis. So, this kind of 
reaction is referred to as antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity right so it is this cell that is a phagocyte which destroys the rpcs destroys the cell that's why it's called cell mediated cytotoxicity but it is dependent on the antibody that's why it is antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity which is found the example for this particular type of hypersensitivity is autoimmune hemolytic anemias the second type of antibody mediated pathology is in this case the cells are not destroyed but then it elicits lots of inflammatory response so let us take the example of a glomerular capillary basal membrane i am talking about a syndrome called good pasteur syndrome okay so that's a glomerular capillary basement membrane these are the endothelial cells and those are the podocytes so what happens in good pasteur syndrome here there is anti glomerular basement membrane antibodies look at that so there is anti glomerular basement membrane antibodies and because of the antigen antibody reaction it results in chemotaxis thereby recruiting more and more neutrophils leading on to more inflammation see the antibody that is anti glomerular basement membrane antibodies in good pasteur syndrome is against the non collagenous domain of type 4 collagen so this can be in the kidney as well as in the lung that's why patients with good pasteur syndrome have both glomerulonephritis as well as pulmonary hemorrhage so the third mechanism what we see in type 2 hypersensitivity is antibody mediated cellular dysfunction okay it's not destruction there is no inflammation it's basically cellular dysfunction let's take one example of myasthenia graves so this is a normal neuromuscular junction that's the end of the neuron and that's your muscle you have acetylcholine which is secreted by the end of the neuron and there is a receptor for acetylcholine that's acetylcholine receptor on the muscle so normally there is a receptor like an interaction and then the normal function of muscle happens right so acetylcholine binds to the acetylcholine receptor so what happens in myasthenia gravis is that there is an antibody which is developed against the acetylcholine receptor so this antibody goes in binds on to the acetylcholine receptor the activity of the normal acetylcholine is blocked and that results in hypofunction leading on to weakness of the muscle and fatigue which worsens with activity so this is what we see in myasthenia gravis so in this particular case there is decreased function at times antibodies can also result in increased function let's see the example of thyroid so that's the normal thyroid follicular epithelial cells so this is a thyroid follicular epithelial cells and you have a ASH receptor that is thyroxin stimulating hormone receptor so these are the ASH molecules so normally there is receptor ligand interaction which results in the normal functioning of the thyroid follicular epithelial cells so in graves disease there is an antibody to this ASH receptor in contrast to the myasthenia gravis what we saw in this case this antibody increases activity leading on to hypofunction leading on to secretion of more and more thyroxine resulting in the clinical manifestation of graves disease so till now we saw few examples of type 2 hypersensitivity right let us see a few more the first one being mismatched blood transfusion we talked about it right see the antigen in this case is the abo blood group antigen whereas the antibody is the anti a or anti b antibodies depending upon the recipient's blood type in this case there is acute hemolytic reaction see with symptoms like back pain dark urine and jaundice second one being hemolytic disease of newborn where the antigen is the rhd antigen on the fetal red blood cells whereas the antibody is the anti d antibodies from the rh negative mother the manifestations include fetal anemia jaundice and in severe cases it can result in high drops fetalis autoimmune hemolytic anemia it could be various auto antibodies targeting against the red cell antigens like rh kid and duffy autoimmune thrombocytopenic purpura is auto antibodies against the platelet antigens particularly the membrane glycoprotein antigens like for example 2b 3a and 1b 9 the drug reactions in this case you know there is a drug modified platelet or red cell surface proteins and for this modified antigen there is antibody 
developing against these modified antigens and depending upon the drug you know the manifestations can include just rash or hemolysis or even thrombocytopenia for the antibody mediated inflammation we saw we we, we learned about good passage syndrome right bullous reactions of skin is also an example for antibody mediated inflammation that is the type 2 hypersensitivity the antigen in I mean in femphigus there is auto antibodies against the skin desmosomal proteins which clinically manifest as you know blisters that's why they are called as bullous skin diseases the next important example for type 2 hypersensitivity reaction is acute rheumatic fever here the antibodies that is the antibodies are against the streptococcal m protein so these anti streptococcal antibodies they cross react with our own tissues and in this case the tissue being heart muscle that's why these patients manifest with fever migrating polyarthritis arthritis also along with various other symptoms another example is vasculitis caused by anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies the last one being antibody mediated cellular dysfunction myasthenia gravis we all saw that whereas pernicious anemia the antibodies are against the intrinsic factor it could be against the intrinsic factor or against the gastric parietal cells the manifestations include megaloblastic anemia and neurological symptoms due to vitamin b12 deficiency and the last one being graves disease which we saw that the antibodies are against thyroid stimulating hormone receptor right and the symptoms are hyperthyroidism like you know weight loss heat intolerance and even exophthalmos so this is all about type 2 hypersensitivity reaction we understood the three important mechanisms involved in type 2 hypersensitivity reaction and we also looked into various examples thank you for watching if you have liked the video hit the like button do comment don't forget to subscribe do not forget to click on the link below for your practice session and do share if you find this video useful thank you